Okay, so um, hi everyone. So you can probably judge from the title, but what we're gonna do today is we're gonna show how you can use Windows executables, service accounts, and cloud services to basically power your own malware operation. Um, shortly about me, I've been uh, around cyber security for a long time now. We've spent some time at ba ah, sorry. <laughs> Thank you for that. So I uh, spent a bunch of time at Microsoft on uh, APIs, IoT, cloud. Uh, I've been doing low-code, no-code security for like three years now, which is weird because uh, not many people are into it, but you will soon be, so that's cool. Uh, I started a company around 18 months ago called Zenity uh, with folks that are sitting right here. We're focused on low-code, no-code security. Um, and again, first time at DEF CON, very excited to be here, as you can probably hear. Um, so thank you for coming. Uh, by the way, this talk is going to feature research from uh, Uriel Zilberberg, who's sitting, sitting right here, one of our researchers. Uh, so give him some love. <laughs> this one is important. Uh, Local no code is, is, is a cool thing. We are very much pro. Uh, the movement. And this talk, I will try to give you an attacker's perspective on that. The reason, of course, is to uh, make sure that this is done in a, in a responsible way. So uh, what you're going to learn today, use it to educate people around you, and uh, let's, let's, see, let's see where it takes us. Okay. So uh, I'm going to start right now. When I say creating a, or running your own malware operation, there are a bunch of things that could mean, so let's figure out what exactly I'm, I'm meaning that, that we're going to do today. So you have initial access to uh, some victim machine. Uh, there's a lot of other things that you need to do around it in order to really call it a malware operation. You need to be able to... Um, okay. So you need to be able to go through a, a, a firewall. You need to be able to actually run malware on that machine and, and, and be able to by bypass the EDR. You need to be able to, uh, to create command and control across that firewall and to exfiltrate the data back, uh, back to your, uh, back, uh, uh, backwards outside of the org. You need to uh, avoid uh, detection by a bunch of enterprise tools that are out there in order to catch you. And you need to remain persistent on the actual victim machine uh, when they are obviously trying to kick you out. All of those things are a bunch of grunt work. So what we're going to do today is we're going to show how uh, instead of having to do all of that yourself, you can just focus on the initial access and on the last part, which is kind of having fun. And we're going to try and figure out whether we can, uh, how, how we can use existing services to take care of all of that ops for us. So what, um, so Here's the service that we're going to use. I'm not sure if you've heard about RPA. This is basically a technology that is out there in every major enterprise today. It's, it's really everywhere. And the idea behind RPA is basically to take uh, mundane processes that business users are doing, so copying and pasting through different softwares that they have on their machine, and basically automating it. And the way that it's, it gets automated is that the users are actually, are actually uh, emulated. So the user gets impersonated. They are uh, copying the uh, kind of the uh, keyboard and the mouse, mouse clicks and then reiterating them. And that's the way that they're, they're using the user's own identity. And it's used uh, to basically facilitate integration with uh, old software that has no APIs, uh, which makes it easier. Uh, so RPA is built of three main components. The first one is an agent. It sits on somebody's laptop, and it emulates the user, as I've just mentioned. The second part is the controller, which is able to go reach out to the, uh, to the machine, send some payload. The payload gets executed, and then the, uh, the output gets routed back. And there's a management portal which allows you to basically say, OK, here are all my agents. Here's the payload I'm going to send to each one of them. The key thing about this technology is that every part here is trusted. And what do I mean by trusted? I mean trusted by the EDR, trusted by network security, trusted by the SOC team. So on the agent side, there are executables that are signed by, by the vendors themselves. We'll see that in a moment. Uh, the communication, so all of the endpoints, uh, all of the protocols, and the cloud services themselves. 
And there are a bunch of vendors that are, send, uh, that are uh, uh, providing these RPA solutions that, as I mentioned, are everywhere in the enterprise. Uh, today, as, you, as you've uh, kind of realized from the talk's title, we're going to focus on Microsoft and you'll, you'll find out why in a moment, but actually everything that I'm going to show you today is not specific to Microsoft. It's actually, uh, it's actually a problem, with, uh, uh, it's actually uh, inherent in the way that RPA works. So, RPA can take, take, can take care of all of the malware ops that I just talked about for us. So command and control, exfiltrating data uh, uh, out, outside of the org, avo avoiding defense, uh, persistency, cleanup, but it also will be able to give us much more. So handling errors, everything that's related to kind of engineering, uh, updating those agents, being able to, uh, to support any type of, uh, of platform, those are all things that the RPA vendors will do for us. Uh, so this is a living of the land attack, and we're going to leave of the land of, uh, of RPA, and specifically Microsoft RPA, to do what, what we want to do. Here's our agenda for today. So we covered the motivation. Next up, we're going to uh, drill down a bit more into what RPA is all about. Um, we'll focus on, we'll do a deep dive and understand how it works. Then I will, I, I will uh, shift gears and sh show you specifically how do you take RPA and leverage it uh, to your own malware operation. And we'll introduce a tool that will allow you to do that, to do that quickly. And don't worry, we'll also send you home with a, kind of a few things you can do to, uh, to remain protected or, or protect your organization. Okay, so in order to understand what RPA is, let's uh, start off with a story. When I was a young, uh, when I was a teenager, my friends and I used to play in a game called Tibia. Who knows what Tibia is? Raise your hand. Okay. That's a weird game, weird MMORPG from a long time ago, uh, where basically you are kind of you level up your character, you play with other players, um, and you, you collaborate. But a lot of the actual time that you get that you spend on that game is actually uh, doing things like fishing. So you need to improve your fishing skills. In order to do that, you're basically, you basically go to a pond and then you need to click. So you click and you get some fish and you click and you get more fish and more fish. And this is basically transforming um, clicks and virtual worms into virtual fish. Uh, this is important for the game, but it is extremely boring. Uh, so of course, as a kind of as a as a teenager, I wanted to take advantage of uh, of, of of this. I wanted to basically be better than my friends and impress them. So I tried to find a creative solution um, for for this to for this to work better. I started off with physical automation. I actually looked for a, for a picture of this. I couldn't find any picture. I'm not sure why my uh, somebody in my family didn't uh, didn't take the picture. Uh, as you can imagine, this this didn't work. <laughs> So the book would fall over, I would wake up uh, in the morning and uh, uh, things were uh, not as I expected. So I had to find a better solution. Um, and I actually went with uh, automation, which was basically, there was software that allowed me to uh, basically record my keyboard and my mouse and then replay them. So I, I, had, I had this setup where I walk around the pond and I click on a bunch of fish and when I wake up in the morning, I'm, I'm, I'm leveled up. So this is what it looks like. And I think you're seeing it. So, and, and basically this made me the hero of my friend. So this was my first kind of, the first moment I got some, um, uh, some love kind of across, uh, uh, kind of became a bit popular. Um, and this is funny because this is actually the basis of RPA. So the same technology that I used as a kid uh, like 20 years ago, uh, is being used in the enterprise today to do very serious things. Um, so RPA, uh, as, a, as a quick recap, it's about replacing copy and paste integration. It's a drag and drop builder. You'll see it in a moment. And the people, uh, and it's used, um, it's used, the people that are building these RPA bots, they can be in IT, but they can also be business users. Um, it emulates the user's own actions, so it operates as the user with their own identity. There's no way to distinguish those clearly. Uh, and it runs on the user's machines. 
And on the use cases side, enterprises are really using it for, for serious things. So uh, customer, uh, customer services, uh, financial services, of onboarding and offboarding, HR. So this is touching business sensitive data. Now, we understand what, now that we understand what RPA is, let's uh, drill down technically into how it works and how, and that would also kind of lead us in the way that, that we're looking for with our, with our malware op. So we want to use uh, RPA for the, for the malware operation. And this is where we're going to actually focus on Microsoft, and this is why. So Microsoft has released an RPA agent called Power Automate Desktop, and it is now baked into every Windows 11 machine. And by baked in, I mean that if you take a fresh Windows machine, and you'll search for Power Automate, it'll be there. It's also trusted by the EDR and trusted by other EDRs as well. So that's why we're going to focus on, uh, on, on that on Microsoft today. Let's start from the user's perspective. So this is a fresh, a fresh Windows machine, Windows 11 machine. Um, searching for Power Automate, I immediately find this, uh, this executable. Let's see if this works. Okay. Okay, it works. So, um, what I'm showing you here is a quick video that uh, that that is, that is me setting up my connection with the RPA with the, that RPA service. The third thing that I'm doing uh, is actually plugging in my Office account, and the crucial thing here is that I could plug in any Office account. So. Uh, I, in this example, I created a new organization. You'll see that in a moment. And I'm plugging in my credentials with that organization. Once I plug in those credentials, I get to this drag and drop builder with a bunch of operations that are available for me. And then I'm going to click and I'm, go I'm going to create a, an hello world application that basically writes hello world to a file on disk. Um, the crucial thing here is that this thing is synced to Office Cloud. And it's not, it, and it's synced to my cloud because I just logged in with my account. And so you'll see in a moment when I kind of finish off with the demonstration here that there's a bunch, so we're seeing it now, there are a bunch of uh, execute, basically um, uh, bots or processes that are available for me to pick and choose from. Uh, those are all uh, things that, were, that I set up previously in my office account. So this is what you, you just saw. When you uh, plug in your credentials, your office credentials, to this, uh, Windows, to this uh, uh, Windows executable, you get all of the different uh, payloads that you, or uh, processes that you have created in an in, in office. This is how it looks like. This is how it looks like from an architecture perspective. So on one side you have uh, Power Automate, the RPA agent, and the, and the other side you have Office. Uh, one sits in on-prem and another in cloud, and uh, the reason that I'm focusing on that is that Microsoft, of course, has to be deployed in everywhere in large organizations, so they need to figure out how, how, I mean, how is this working? They haven't asked for permission from anybody, right? It's, it's already there. So what we're going to figure out right now, technically, is how is this communicating? So we'll focus first on the, on the left side, which is actually the local side. Power Automate is not one executable. There are a bunch of those. Uh, there's, a, there's one service that's called Power Automate, runs on the user's own, uh, own account. And there's another service account that's being created that you can see here that runs with an executable called machine, that's called Machine Runtime. And that will be the one that's actually in charge of communicating with Office Cloud. We'll see that in a moment. There's also, uh, Power Automate also allows you to automate the browser. So you can basically, so through an extension on all popular browsers, you can change what users are viewing on the browsers and you can also kind of fetch all of the information that they have there. So we'll add that uh, to our architecture as well. As you can see, there are kind of, uh, there are these extensions across all of these different, all of the different browsers. This is the, so what you're seeing here is actually that I've only talked about three executables out of uh, about 20 that are built in to Windows 11. Again, and you're seeing that this is in a trusted, uh, this, this is kind of a, uh, in a trusted location. Uh, so there are, if there's plenty of opportunity to do more research here. So if you're looking for a challenge, uh, I recommend checking this out. 
So let's switch, uh, switch to another direction and talk about the communication. So of course, uh, network boundaries have been, I mean, people have been trying to, uh, to maintain them for a long time. And there's a really serious question we should ask ourselves here, which is how is Microsoft able to communicate with office services without having some IT admin uh, open up a, a port somewhere? Um, the way that this, is, that this is done is with a neat service uh, called uh, Azure, uh, Azure Service Bus. It's, it used to be Azure Relay. Basically, both sides are, 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 are creating an outbound communication. And, and so this is how the channel gets, uh, gets created. So the, the agent will reach out uh, to Azure Service Bus every couple of minutes say, and, and ask for new tasks that it should uh, pick up and use. Okay. Um, so we're connected. We understand how these things operate. We understand that it, uh, we understand that it, it has components that run as the user and components that run as, as a service account. Uh, the crucial thing to note right here, because it's the last time I'm going to say it, is that all of these things are trusted. The executables are trusted. The service accounts are trusted. The cloud accounts are trusted. They are all in the allow list that, that you get that you get by default. Once you plug in your machine, this is what you're seeing from the Office side. So Office provides you with kind of a, a, a nice way to view all of the machines that are connected uh, to your cloud. You can also run things on the laptop from the cloud. So you trigger, uh, you, you, trig you create some sort of a, a, of a payload and you can execute it from the cloud on some machine. And then you get uh, status, you can look at history, you can debug things. So all of the kind of uh, convenience layers that you need around it. The last thing that I want to cover in terms of architecture is how is trust being established. So it's not only about con a connection to the Azure service bus. Actually, there, there needs to be kind of a, a, a a trusted communication between the two. So when you register your machine with, uh, with Power Automate that you, you saw me do a few minutes ago, there's a private key that's being created on your local machine and a public key on, on the cloud side. And it's being used to basically uh, encrypt a message that sends two things uh, to the machine through Azure Service Bus. The first thing is local credentials. So you can run those payloads which, 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 with whichever local credentials you'd like on the machine. And the second thing is an RPA task, which is the kind of the process that you would like to run. So again, in a summary, uh, kind of in, in a nutshell, this runs on the, uh, this executes on the user's own, uh, with the user's own credentials, and it, uh, and it constantly goes out to office and asking whether there's something it needs to be running. So, what we're going to do right now is we're going to switch gear up until uh, switch gears up until now it was kind of uh, theoretical we're going to go to specifics of how you can use this this setup uh, to run your malware operation with uh, uh, power automate microsoft rpa so let's uh, remember our wish list this was the these were the things that we wanted to accomplish when we started uh, when we started this conversation so all of the things here that are, uh, that are around ops, we'll go through each one and show how they can be done. First up, we need a bit of setup. Um, so what you need in order to use this is basically create, what I'm doing here is creating a new uh, tenant within Microsoft. It's kind of a trial version. You don't need to plug in your credit cards. Uh, it co won't cost you anything. I'm creating a new organization, and, and you can see that uh, once it is created, there, there's a... Um, there's a guide here that which points me to how do I create, how do I onboard new machines here? So we need to onboard Victor machines into my uh, malicious uh, Microsoft account. Uh, you've seen me do this already in the demo, uh, but this was done through UI, which is kind of not what we're, what we're, what we're after, right, as, as hackers. Um, so the question is whether we can do it uh, programmatically with some script. Uh, fortunately, Microsoft has provided a script for us, again, signed already in your Windows machines. Uh, so you run this uh, uh, silent, regi silent registration script, and you provide it with your uh, organization ID. And again, the crucial piece here, uh, if, you have a, kind of your, if you're thinking of detections as well, is that you can plug in any tenant ID here. So of course, I'm just, sending, I'm, I'm just saying, OK, this is my uh, this is my account, and I'm pointing, uh, pointing this agent to my malicious office tenant. Um, once I run this script, 
I can I go back to the list of machines and the machine is already there and you can see that I I have the status of, of that machine the version of the agent that's sitting here um, so that's kind of cool that we, we that, that that's how that's basically our way to onboard um, our victims to our to our malware operation one thing that was problematic about what I just uh, showed you is that this requires an admin privilege on the on the local side to do this onboarding which makes this kind of boring right uh, fortunately that's not really the case so uh, we didn't do anything anything special here we just tried it worked so well, why not uh, so you can just run this and and, and it will connect you to and it will connect uh, uh, the victim's machine to your uh, to your cloud once the victim machine is, is registered, here's what you need to do in order to run a payload from the cloud to the machine. So you create this, uh, this automation from the cloud side. You create a connection. You basically you choose which uh, machine you're going to run on. You choose the, the local credentials. We saw that this is part of the payload earlier. And you choose a specific payload that you'd like to run. Of course, you can create uh, new payloads and, uh, on your own machine and upload them uh, to, to Windows. One thing that we need to figure out, because we need to, uh, we need to provide user, a user account here, we need to figure out what happens if that user is already logged in to the local account, right? What would it do to, to the user session? So again, um, people have already fixed this problem for us. RPA has two versions, attended RPA, which basically runs in parallel to a logged in user. This also means I can take charge of everything that the user is doing. I can open the browser and, and take their cookies. I can do everything that the user is doing. And on the other side, there's uh, unattended RPA, which basically creates a new session, runs the payload, and discards of the session. So we've seen a bunch of things. Um, from our from our list of the of, of uh, malware operation that we wanted to create, we know that uh, we can deploy malware. We saw this with the register with the, uh, with the basically a silent registration. We know that this avoids defense. Well, this was the premise. Everything here is trusted, and we know that you can maintain persistency because I didn't install anything on the laptop, right? <laughs> I only used uh, Microsoft's own, um, own executables. What we're going to show next is how we'll, uh, how we'll accomplish all of, all of, the, diff all of, the, uh, all of the, the things that are left over. Now, we've only, al already kind of seen command and control, uh, but, we'll drill, but, but we only saw specific payloads, so let's, let's drill down to, uh, into it some more. Okay. Um, this is how we're going to, this is, now we're going to just going to show what you can build with this RPA. What, what can you actually do uh, on the user's machine? So here's a very quick uh, data exfil uh, uh, for you. This is, a, this is an RPA flow that does the following. It gets as an input a file, a pass on the hard disk, and it basically, it reads the file, and it sends the file content as an output of that flow. Uh, again, this runs with uh, Microsoft's executable. From the, where, and uh, the key thing that we need to think about is where is the output actually going? So it's going to Microsoft Cloud. I'm triggering it from Office. I'm logging into Office with my malicious account. I'm sending out this payload, and I get in response the actual the the, um, the content of the file. So recalling the uh, architecture that we saw earlier, let's figure out where does the data move to make sure that that we are that we don't get uh, caught along the way. So. This is the architecture that we saw, and these are the three steps that are actually happening. I'm building those instructions on my side, on a malicious machine somewhere, and I'm up uploading the instructions to Office Cloud. Then I'm sending the payload to the machine through the Microsoft Trusted uh, Communication Channel, and the output goes uh, through that same channel. So again, completely undetected. So uh, here's another example. Um, we're gonna, so this example goes through uh, code execution. So we saw that you can run specific, uh, specific payloads, but actually I would like to be able to run everything that I want on, on, that, on that laptop. Um, so again, fortunately, the RPA agent provides you with the uh, uh, operations that, are, uh, that allow you to execute actual, actual code. So uh, command lines, uh, PowerShell, Python, JavaScript. So here's a quick, uh, a quick automation. I'm basically sending out a script, telling them which kind of script, how, is it need, how will it be executed, and then I'm exfiltrating outside the uh, STD, out and STD error. 
Actually, the problem is that when I run this, it, get, it gets flagged by, uh, by, by Microsoft EDR. Now, why, why does it get flagged? I mean, it gets flagged because I, run an, uh, I ran a command line. It doesn't really matter who created that command line. Uh, the, uh, the EDR is very focused on, on, on looking on those command lines that are actually, uh, that are actually running. So you can see that I, I basically went out of the trusted part. So there's the trusted part, the RPA agent, which is able to run some sort of code, like here's a piece of code, run it with uh, this executable or that executable, and there's the, the untrusted part, which is the command line. So the question becomes, what can we do only with this drag and drop primitive, primitive? So what kind of malware we can build only with no code? Actually, we can do a whole bunch of things. So these are all things that are provided by the RPA agent. Let me name some of them. You can uh, use the built-in encryption function to encrypt files. You can trigger HTTP calls. You can communicate with Active Directory and Windows services and processes. You can look at files and folders. You can automate the browser. You can take screenshots. You can automate the mouse and the keyboard. You can copy the clipboard. You get it, right? You can do basically everything. So uh, let's, do, let's do a couple of things. Here's a uh, no-code ransomware for you. Uh, this one is, again, very simple. I'm um, iterating through the, uh, through the, through the drive, uh, uh, through the local drive. I'm uh, reading, reading a file, encrypting that file with the uh, provided encryption function, and then uh, uh, stamping that file with, uh, replacing it with the, with the, from the original. Here's how this gets triggered from the cloud side. So again, very simple. I'm saying, uh, here's the directory I'd like to encrypt. Here's the private key. Uh, and it will just go to the machine, send the payload, encrypt the file, and that's it. And I'm getting flashes here that I, that I don't have a lot of time. So I'm going I'm gonna, I'm gonna to skip kind of through it. But as you can see, this is being triggered from the cloud side. And when the task gets finished, and, and you saw that this already happened, I, I basically see it, I, I get the results uh, on the cloud. And from the machine side, of course, the files are encrypted. The EDR didn't catch it. Uh, this is all being done by the, by the Microsoft executable. OK. Um, here's another one for you. So we know that uh, this, this agent is actually creating a whole bunch of logs, uh, the, the agent that we're actually using. Because every time that, the op that, uh, that it gets called, it, it writes uh, what, what, what did it call, uh, what exactly did it do. Um, but again, looking at Microsoft the documentation, we can figure out where these logs are being uh, uh, maintained, and we can just go ahead and delete them. So here's the flow to do that. Um, I'll finish off with one, other, with one more. We talked about, uh, about the browser, so uh, here's a quick uh, thing that we can do. We can open the browser, we can uh, go to some uh, endpoint that we'd like to steal the user's token from, uh, and we just uh, plug in a JavaScript, uh, a JavaScript um, a shell inside, inside, of that, uh, inside of that browser to basically take, take home the cookie. Uh, so there's a quick demo for that here. I'm not sure I have the time, but basically, it's really simple. Um, what this does is it's, oh, it opens up the browser, it goes to that location, and it just uh, runs that, the JavaScript uh, uh, script that, I, that I've mentioned. And fortunately, there's a, there's a nice uh, property here which you, where you can open the browser in a minimized version, so the user won't notice. Okay. So a quick recap on, on every, anything we did, everything we did up until now. We saw uh, how you can deploy malware, you can avoid detection, you can remain persistent. We saw how you can create command, uh, how you can create command and control through the Office Cloud. We saw exfiltration and cleanup. We actually wanted to show a bunch of other things like uh, keylogger and other things, but uh, you can just play around with it, and I'm sure you'll find it nice. Um, the one thing that I'm going, to, the one thing that I have left for you is how do you do all of that as part of your existing arsenal? So you don't want to be playing with UI for Office and, and those things. So um, we've introduced this new tool for you. You can uh, you can go ahead and, and use it right now. I'll send, uh, you'll, you'll have a, an address in a moment. Uh, basically. We've covered a bunch of things for you, so we are, hand we are handling errors. Uh, we are creating an HTTP endpoint on the, office, on the malicious office side, which you can just call. And then 
you do something like you post, okay, here's the machine I'd like to, I'd, I'd like to run this payload on, here's the payload I'd like to run, here are some parameters, and you get back all of the, um, all of the, all of the outputs of that, uh, of that uh, uh, process, and all of the things that you saw here in the talk, and other payloads as well, are available through that, through that tool. So this is available right now. Um, there's a convenience layer around it in Python. Let me quickly describe how it works. You create your, uh, your uh, Microsoft tenant. There's in, there's, there are instructions on how to do that. Again, no credit card, free of charge. Uh, you run a quick script that I'm th for, for setting up that tenant. You register with your machines with Microsoft executables, not mine. And then you use this nice uh, Python script to do things like run ransomware, uh, run specific commands, and uh, feel, please feel free to uh, send out uh, pull requests with, uh, with new payloads. So, we're about done. Let's do a quick recap. Uh, we've, we saw what RPA is. We saw that it's available on every major enterprise. Check, out, check it out back home, you'll see. It's already there. We saw how it works and we saw how it can be used to power a malware operation. Uh, we saw that, the, that you can use it with low code primitives that basically allow you to do whatever you want. Uh, we saw PowerPoint, which is a new tool that you can use right now to play around with it and, you, and to see how it works. Uh, the last thing I'm going to do, and, and I'll do it very quickly, is uh, leave you off with a few things you can do to protect yourself, to protect your organization. So uh, here's one very, very obvious thing. Monitor these executables. <laughs> so as you, can saw, uh, as you can see, you need to make sure that uh, basically the, the, numbers, the number one thing you need to make sure is that people are not registering those agents to, uh, to a tenant that is not your own. Uh, you can also review micro the, the, uh, this entire talk was focused on using the existing tools without talking about whether the organization itself is going to use it. So your users are, might actually be using this. And if they're using this, there are a bunch of issues that can occur. And if that's interesting for you, I have another talk here at 4, uh, uh, 4 p.m., same room. Uh, so if you're not tired of me yet, uh, see you again. And there are a bunch of information that you can use here to, to learn more, Microsoft documentation. There's an OWASP group that, uh, that is focused on this area. Uh, and a bunch of blogs and content. Thank you very much.